There are very few things in the open source world that the Linux community agrees on. In fact, I would say that there are zero things that we all agree on in the Linux community, and that's just kind of the way human nature goes. There's nothing actually wrong with it. In fact, it is kind of the basis of the open source nature to dislike something so much that you go off and create your own version of it, or you fork it, or whatever. That's the reason why we have 4,000 different distros. It's why we have nine different ways of having an init system. It's why we have 14 different desktop environments. You get the point. When you don't like something, you go off and create something different, or you create a fork of it, whatever it happens to be. That's kind of the nature of the game. As a community, we don't even really agree on the things that we dislike, but there are a few things that seem to provoke an almost irrational response amongst a very small portion of our community. Things that make them shout and grind their teeth and just really be severely angry over some things. So what I thought I would do today is talk about five things that a lot of people in the Linux and open source community actually hate. Some of these things are irrational, some of them are perfectly fine to hate, and as long as it doesn't, you know, prevent you from moving on with your life. But they're things that a large number of people actually do despise. Now, the first one on the list has to be System D. System D, for those of you who don't know, is hard to explain because it's actually a suite of software that helps run your computer. And that's really the most general way you can put it. Most Linux distros right now use System D, and they use it for their init system, they use it for their journaling system, things like that. Every part of your system, really, it's untouched by something that has to relate to system D and it has grown into a monster of a program it's one of the largest programs that runs on your computer and that sets some people off not only because it has a ton of stuff in it so it's bloated but also because it's backed by a major corporation so that is kind of a double strike against it so that has led to the development of several other pieces of software that can act as just in its systems that don't do nearly as much as system D but are simpler or less bloated and that has led to distros that rely on those things so for example devon is a debian based distribution but it doesn't use systemd it uses a couple different init systems and it offers those choices and it's more of a it's a protest distro right people are protesting the use of systemd by creating a distribution that doesn't use it now the hatred against systemd is as I said both because it is bloated but also because it's backed by a corporation and that corporation of course is Red Hat and now Red Hat is owned by IBM so it's owned by an even bigger corporation and people of course don't like that the second one on the list has to be the hatred of corporations now this is one that I have a problem with and I'll talk about that in a minute but let's first explain why people don't like corporations having their greedy mitts in the open source world. It all has to do with the idea that corporations are never going to have the best of intentions for the community. Instead, their intentions all have to do with making as much money as possible. That's the nature of being a corporation. And because they have to make as much money, obviously they can't be solely invested in making the best product for the community because a lot of times the decisions they would have to make if they were the best for the community would go against their goal of making as much money as possible. So that's one of the reasons why people don't particularly care for corporate influence on open source software and Linux in general. Now, obviously, that whole problem has more to do with capitalism and stuff like that, and we don't really need to get into it, but that's really the underlying issue there. My response to that is that if we did not have corporate investment in open source and Linux, I don't think open source and Linux would really even exist today in any measurable way. And we almost know that to be true because the vast majority of corporations and institutions that use Linux now only are able to do so because of the corporate support that it has received over the last 30 years to be able to run on all sorts of hardware. Someone has to pay Linus Torvald's paycheck. And if they 
hadn't done so, he pro probably would have had to move on to other places to, in order to feed his family and all that stuff. And it's obviously not just Red Hat that has this hatred against them. We're also talking about Canonical in that they are almost hated even more than Red Hat is because for some reason there are things that Canonical has done in the past that has just pissed a lot of people off. Whether it's keeping the back end of Snap's closed source or having advertising in their desktop or having Amazon affiliate links all over the place. A lot of things have made people mad regarding Canonical. And that feeling has stuck around for a lot of people and they won't even touch Ubuntu or likely anything based on Ubuntu. Now, the next one on the list is one that I'm very guilty of hating myself, and that is GNOME. Now, there are two aspects of the hatred here that we need to talk about. The first one is political, and I hate politics. I hardly ever talk about politics on my channel. In fact, I'd go so far as to say I never talk about them because politics are one of those things that nobody is ever going to agree on. But a few years ago, probably a couple of years ago at this point, the GNOME Foundation had some very bad press because they got very political and that caused a lot of backlash against them uh, and a lot of support for them for people who agreed with them and people who didn't disagree with them personally i don't care what their political stance is but it's definitely one of the reasons why a lot of people don't like gnome because the foundation that supports it and develops it has a lot of political views and they are not shy about putting those things out there now, the other side of this coin that is more relevant to me is that GNOME itself has sucked many times in the past. When GNOME 3 first came out, it was garbage. And it was garbage for a long time. Like, years. Like, seriously, it was so slow you couldn't use it. And that problem stayed around and almost until Ubuntu decided that they were going to switch from Unity to GNOME. Once Canonical and Ubuntu got involved in the lower stream development of GNOME and started pushing things upstream, GNOME got faster almost immediately because there was no way Ubuntu was going to be able to ship a version of GNOME that was as slow as it had been. There was just no way that was going to happen, or at least they weren't going to ship it for very long. They needed to do something to speed it up. They sped up the animations. They spent up a whole bunch of different things. They made it much, much simpler. Now, obviously, Ubuntu has had to do many other things to GNOME in order to actually make it usable, like add customizations, put icons back on the desktop, things like that. But the hatred behind the use of GNOME is somewhat related to GNOME's developers being very set in their ways. They have a vision for their desktop environment, and they do not like the community having any input whatsoever. None. They don't think that the community has the right ideas when it comes to using Linux. And the GNOME people, therefore, do what they want to do, no matter what the outcome is for the community itself. And it seems that they have the right idea because a lot of people and a lot of distros specifically still use GNOME and don't seem to have that big of a problem. There are situations in the last six months or so where that stubbornness to not listen to your community specifically your developer community has caused some scandal and caused people to move away from gtk and gnome all this stuff but for the most part gnome seems to be very popular amongst a lot of linux distributions now me personally i've always disliked the gnome workflow i've just never really cared for it i think it's a lot better now than it used to be but i still have the idea that GNOME is just not very good. Now, it, like I said, it has gotten better, and I will freely admit that I understand it now more than I did before, but it's still not something that I care for, and I know a lot of people just don't like GNOME at all, and some of that, like I said, is the political stuff, but some of it is just that GNOME sucked for a really long time, and it hasn't really been able to remove any of that taint away from itself. Now, the next one is almost universally hated. And this is something that a lot of people really, really hate, including me. Like, a lot of people, I'm just telling you. And that is Electron. People really, really hate Electron. And for really good reason. It's not very good. And when I say it's not very good, I mean it's not very fast. And it takes up a lot of resources. Like, a lot of resources. And that messes with a lot of people's systems. It makes it hard to run those types of apps on lower-end hardware. It's just, like I said, it's not very good. On the other hand, 
like I said, this is coming from someone who hates Electron just as much as you do, or as much as you probably do. I have to look at this and say, you know what? Electron may not be very good. It may take up a lot of resources, a lot of memory, all this stuff. But without it, we wouldn't have nearly as much software on Linux as we do. We wouldn't have Discord. We wouldn't have Spotify. We wouldn't have Microsoft Teams. We wouldn't have any number of pieces of proprietary software that a lot of people use. And if we didn't have those pieces of software, Linux would be poorer for it. Unfortunately, a lot of people need to use those pieces of software. They need to use Discord. They need to use Teams. They need to use slack they need to use all these things in order to do actual work and without electron we wouldn't have them so we would be back five years ago ten years ago where people didn't use linux because they couldn't simply get the programs that they needed now that electron is here for the most part people can get the uh, programs that they need in order to do their work now obviously there are still some exceptions we're looking at you adobe uh, those programs aren't here, but the productivity apps that most people need now have Electron versions that run perfectly fine on Linux. And the hatred for Electron, I feel, is solely the response of how much many resources that it takes. There is probably a little bit of taint on it because it uses the Google Chrome slash Chromium engine underneath it, right? If that used Firefox, people probably wouldn't hate it nearly as much. But I don't think that most people even care about that. They're just looking at it like, wow, this application is pretty slow. It takes up a lot of memory. Therefore, I don't like Electron. You know what I mean? So Electron is definitely one. I think out of all the ones that are on this list, that is the one that most people seem to agree on. That Electron isn't that great and it really should be better. Now, the last one on the list is a little polarizing because I know a lot of people that really like it. And that is WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux. Now, this thing, when it first came out, was very controversial because it made a lot of people think that if you could use Linux on Windows, why would you ever install Linux on hardware? And that fear and uncertainty definitely led to a lot of hatred for it and a lot of misconceptions over what it actually was. The first version of WSL was not good. It did not have a Linux kernel. You couldn't run a lot of programs on it. You definitely couldn't create a scenario where you would run GUI Linux software on it, at least not very easily. The second version is obviously way better and it's a full sy Linux system. It has an actual kernel. And the thing is, like I said, there's a lot of people like it. If you are a Windows user, but you need to do Linux development, having a ready to go Linux kernel right there for you to do your development work on without having to switch is very nice right? And it offers a lot of benefits for developers that you just really couldn't get if you were dual booting. And I do think that it has gotten some people interested in Linux who might not otherwise have been interested in Linux at all. Maybe it's not a lot of people, but I think that that group of people does exist. I do not think that it has hurt Linux in any way. Now, I say that and then I say this, at least it hasn't hurt Linux in any way yet. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, there is still a possibility, this being developed by Microsoft, that Microsoft will one day decide that they're going to do something evil and try to cut people off from Linux altogether or some suitably evil situation or scenario. You know what I mean? It's possible that that could happen. I seem to always expect Microsoft to do that, you know, em embrace, extend, extinguish. But at least so far, it doesn't seem to have happened, and WSL has been something that has been a benefit to some people. But that doesn't mean that there aren't still people out there who hate it, because there definitely are people who can't stand the idea that WSL even exists. They can't stand the idea that this thing might be eating away at potential Linux users. Whatever the reasons are, there are those people out there, because I hear from them in my comment section every once in a while. So, those are the five things that... A lot of people hate in the Linux slash open source community. And whether, again, those reasons for hatred are good or not, they exist. I personally think that of the ones that I talked about, the only legitimate hatred that can be had is against Electron. And that's just because it has legitimate problems. Most of the other ones are not very rational. Your hatred against SystemD, not very rational, in my opinion. It's just not. SystemD is really good. <laughs> it's just really good. It doesn't do too much. Uh, maybe, but it doesn't do things that aren't good, as far as I'm aware. 
you know, it, it seems to do several jobs very well. So it doesn't mean that the offshoots or the alternatives to systemd are, are bad. It just means that y people who hate systemd likely don't do so because it's actually a bad product, but more because they have moral or ethical reasons to hate it. The hatred behind GNOME is, like I said, complicated, and the prickliness of the developers behind GNOME doesn't really help matters all that much. The hatred for corporations is just something that we're going to have to put up with because without corporations and corporate support, Linux probably wouldn't be as popular as it is now. At least, that's the way I feel. And then WSL, of course, is hated mostly because it's produced by Microsoft. That's really the bottom line of it. So if you have something that you hate and you would like to discuss that in the comment section below, leave a comment. I would really like to hear from you. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. If you want to follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey, those links will be in the video description just below the like button. Make sure you hit the like button. It really does help the channel out. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the LinuxCast, just like all of these fine people. Thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon and YouTube. Without you guys, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.